Hey everybody, what's going on? We are back with a very special lens review and also to talk a little bit about a battery grip, but the focus on this is this special lens. And it's a lens that there are a few times in photography when you pick up a lens, you try it for the first time and you get that tingle inside you because it's so beautiful. It renders the image so well that you're in awe. And this is one of those lenses. This is the Nikkor Noct 58 millimeter 0.95. Anyway, like all our reviews, we're not paid or sponsored by anyone for this. These are my thoughts and my thoughts only. So let's get down to talk about the lens. Now, first off, this is paired onto the Nikon Z7, one of my favorite Nikon cameras with the new battery grip, which we'll talk about in just a bit, as I mentioned before. This lens comes in and at a whopping two kilos, approximately, give or take. That means it makes the Zeiss O2s feel like a kit lens <laughs> at one kilo. I'm joking, the Zeiss O2s is a beautiful lens. But yes, this is two kilos. This is a lot of glass and a lot of metal on a camera body. It is the Z-mount, so if you want to put this on, let's say a Nikon D850, you're out of luck. This is a Z-mount only lens. So let's talk about what's inside this. We have 17 elements, 10 groups. You have three spherical elements. You have four extra low dispersion elements, Arneo Nano Crystal and Fluorine Coats. It's a manual focus design lens. You have a uh, customized control ring at the bottom here. You have your display, you have your function button that's customizable. Now, with all this coating on this lens, on these elements, what they're basically doing, Nikon is doing, is they're making this so there's no ghosting, there's really minimal flaring, very, I mean, very minimal to zero chromatic aberration. This lens renders extremely sharp when you nail the focus at 0.95. The rest of it just blows out like it's annihilated in the background. Beautiful bokeh, stunning, circular, a little bit cat's eye circular to it, but it just has a great character to it. It's just a stunning lens to shoot with. Now, now using it, the first thing you're obviously gonna notice is the weight, as I mentioned before. You even have a tripod mount that's uh, onto this and you cannot take this off. It is on it, you can loosen and move it around, but it's on the lens no matter what. But one of your challenges you're gonna find with this lens is the long focus throw. And what I mean by that is if I'm here at point of five meters, or let's say point, I think it's slightly less than 0.5 meters, and I go all the way to infinity, right? That's how much I have to turn. So when you're using this lens, the first thing you need to realize is that you need to sort of pre-zone focus before you decide to shoot your subject. That's gonna help you a lot. Even with focus peaking turned on in this camera, and I went through the various different modes of focus peaking, even when it's all red with focus peaking, whatever color you choose, you need to zoom in or magnify into your subject to really nail the focus at 0.95. This lens is not meant to be shot at f4, f8, or f16, even though it can do those great, and it looks phenomenal. This lens is at its best at 0.95. So I get the, the focus peaking in, in check. I, I magnify in, dial in the focusing a little bit more, I fire off, and the image, as you can see here, is tack sharp. It's just a stunning lens to use. And now, as I mentioned before, this focus peaking, then you can magnify into your subject. Now, Nikon actually has a very cool feature for manual focusing where it's like a little green box, your focus point, and when it, it's focused, it'll go green. Now, the thing is at 0.95, it's such a thin, shallow, like, focal plane, right? It, it'll just flicker green. So the best part is to always magnify in, just to dial in that focus just to be sure because unless you're very far away from your subject where you can get more of your subject in focus, let's say if I'm about three or four meters away, that green box works really well. But if I'm close up on a subject, you're really gonna have to manually focus it without relying on that. Now, one of the things about shooting with 0.95 though, I think which is really interesting is that you can shoot the most mundane things and make it look beautiful. Like you could shoot an ornament on a Christmas tree and if you shoot at the right angle, you get that beautiful bokeh and the background just melts away and all of a sudden it just turns into something else. Now, you don't want to overdo this type of photography and a lot of people that tend to get a very fast lens like to shoot everything like this. I would say be selective, but you can really make a lot of boring things look really good at 0.95 when you nail the focus. If you're gonna be one of those that watch this video and you're gonna be like, well, 
Why would I want to spend 8,000 US dollars on a lens or 12,000 Singapore dollars and this lens isn't for you? It's a lens that if you really want to buy it, this can actually get you into a Z-mount Z uh, camera. I'll tell you that right now because shooting with this, and I've, I've shot with this over the past couple weeks, it's made me really reappreciate the Nikon Z7. I've already liked the camera, but it made me really reappreciate the image quality and what this system is capable of when you have tied to a lens this kind of quality. Now, it's one of my favorite 50s I've ever used. It is stunning. I have used other 0.95s in the market. This lens is the best of them all. It's the most, it's the newest, it has the most modern rendering in some ways, but it also has that, it just has that, that special feeling to your images that just makes them pop in a way that when I show these images to people, they go like, what did you use to shoot this with? This is, wow. And that's what I get, that's, the, that's really what I get is wow. I mean, that, <laughs> that's what this lens produces. So, for those of you who have the means to afford this lens and you're on the fence, don't be. This lens will reward you in many, many ways. Is this a lens you would take on a trip and travel around a walk, or let's say around like the city of Barcelona or Rome for a day and do sightseeing shots? Go to the gym before you do that. It's heavy. It's gonna take some out of your, it's gonna take some uh, toll on your shoulders, but I mean, obviously get a right strap. This uh, stock strap by Nikon feels like a shoestring on it because of the weight. So I recommend like a peak design or a thicker strap. Talking about this lens, we gotta talk about how this lens comes packaged in. And I actually have it with me here. Let me pull this out. This is how the lens comes. I love, I love what Nikon's done with this. You know, you spend this kind of money, give us packaging like this. Now, I don't know if this is a Pelican case. I believe it is. They don't say any branding on it at all. But I mean, when you open it up, you've got the lens inside of it. You've got your you've got spots you can put your cameras inside. This could be your travel case for your camera system. These cases aren't that cheap. I applaud that Nikon did this. It just makes the whole system all together. And I mean, Nikon knocked Japan. Nikon, I applaud you. Please do more of this. Let's talk about the battery grip. I just got the battery grip. If you want this lens, please invest in the battery grip. It will make your life a lot easier. It does give a lot more balance to it. Now, there has been a lot of talk about Nikon's battery grip for the Z-mount system. And one of the major complaints is there's no shutter release button. Fair enough. We'll get to that in just a second. Let's talk about the design. Now, the design is, would I say that it matches the Z body 100%? Does it look like it would be like a D5 or D6 or something? No, it doesn't. I mean, it does look like an attachment piece. The bottom part is uh, smoother plastic here. I don't find it to be slippery, really. Um, and also, they did this because obviously you have to dissipate, uh, disperse heat that's coming out of the battery. So if you do have it rubber coated, you're going to insulate the heat, which can cause issues. So I do understand the design language and why Nikon did that. Now, on a lot of external battery grips, all the batteries go on one side. So once you take out that tray to uh, change batteries, you've got to turn the camera off, not with this. There's a battery door here and there's a battery door here. You can check the levels here. It's very simple to do. As you can see, I'm fully charged on that. And so if I'm recording video or if I'm doing, let's say, I'm doing astrophotography and I'm doing, let's say, a 20 minute long you know, exposure, I don't need to turn off the camera to change batteries. I can just open one door up, change the battery, pop it back in, I'm good to go. And the battery life is great. It's gonna get you all day long photography, no issues at all. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the shutter release button. Yes, it's not on there. Everybody's complained about it. Why Nikon decided not to put a shutter release button? We don't know. However, there are fixes Nikon can do to alleviate that. And we were uh, discussing this actually when I picked up the battery grip, is actually what you could do if Nikon comes out with a firmware update for the Z series, is allow any of these buttons to be programmable to be the shutter release. So that way, I could do shutter release technically like this on any of these four buttons or even the OK button here. And that would just completely change the game for me. So it would be nice if it like auto detects the battery grip and then also one of these buttons becomes a shutter release. That would be fantastic. I don't know if they can do that in firmware or software, but if Nikon, again, if you're watching this video and hopefully you are, please add that in. That would alleviate a lot of issues and then that way you'd have this, you could have the shutter release there and nobody would be complaining one bit and you'd have the best of both worlds. Overall, I'm liking where Nikon's going with what they're doing on this. Now, as I mentioned before, there's been a lot of talk about their lens lineup, about sort of the lackluster choices they've been coming out with lenses as of late. Nikon, take what you're doing with the knock, bring it into new lenses, 1.2s, 1.4s, get the industry excited about using Nikon lenses. You make phenomenal glass, you make phenomenal cameras. 
I love what you guys are doing with your mirrorless cameras. Let's make it happen. As far as the battery grip, function, change the function key so we can actually make that a, a, a shutter release button and all is good in the world. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Nox 58.95 and of course the battery grip on the Nikon Z7. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you looking to get this lens? Have you shot with this lens? What are your thoughts on it? What do you think of the battery grip? Let me know. Anyway, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook. Until the next one, take care.